can I say? I mean, that was an unreal win. The Philadelphia Eagles look down and out, being dominated in the first half. They come back in the second half. They pitch a shutout. They get a late touchdown. They make Travis Kelsey, without Taylor Swift in the house, a kind of a goat, and they keep rolling on. These games that they look like they have no business winning, and they find a way to win Welcome to the Pond La Hockey postgame show. We are live from Ocean Casino. I am Mike Missinelli tonight with, with Mark Farzetta and Seth Joyner. And, you know, fellas, I, I got to be honest with you. I didn't see this one coming after that. I looked at that first half, and in every category, the Eagles were getting dominated. And all of a sudden, they flipped the script, and they win the game. So it, it's a matter at this point, Seth, that I want to go to you first because I know you're always afraid of the way they win these games. And, you, and so one of these days, they're going to get their comeuppance. I know that's what you're thinking. But they just find a way to win. Who would have thought they would have won this game 21-17 to if the Chiefs led 17-7 to in the first half and looked like they had every answer. They blitzed the heck out of the Eagles. Jalen Hurts looked confused. I, I don't know what to say. Listen, at 17-7, to you know, I didn't believe that the Eagles could come back from – from that deficit. But I was reading a stat this week that Jalen Hurts is at his best when this team is behind. And what we just witnessed tonight, man, listen, this team knows how to win. They know how to finish. They know how to find a way to win. You know, I, I, I don't know whether they can win a Super Bowl playing the way that they keep playing. <laughs> but you know what, Mike? They keep winning. You know, so we can analyze the game any way we want to. But when you look at the standing, you look at the stand, the Dallas Cowboys, the San Francisco 49ers, the, the Detroit Lions, they were drooling on their shirts tonight, assured that the Eagles had let one fall and come back to the pack by one. And they snatched defeat from the jaws of victory <laughs> and won hey, this damn game, man. I, I'm just like, I'm blown away by what I see. I, I am, too. I, I can't believe they won that game. But to Farsi, uh, he, they get to the second half, and their first drive, because they love that first drive in the second half, the first drive goes three and out. I'm looking at the stats. They had 70 of the 79 yards they had with several minutes into the third quarter on the one drive where they scored the first touchdown. They had nine yards. And it looked like Steve Spagnuolo, the defensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs, had every answer. How did they bust out of this? Well, I, the only explanation is the one that answers the question, what does good teams do? Good teams find ways to win games. I mean, there is no logic. <laughs> there here, is Barbie. no stat. Well, hold on a second. <laughs> what have we been saying all year long? You're not going to be able to play with these kinds of mistakes against the upper echelon teams. They have made mistakes against good teams. The Dallas Cowboys, they found a way to win that game. They made mistakes against Miami, even though they play one of their better games in total against Miami, and they beat Miami. And now they come out against the Kansas City Chiefs, the two-time Super Bowl champion, and we all know the resume, and they find a way to win this game. You can say what you want about drop balls by the Kansas City Chiefs, and it's true. It's absolutely true. <laughs> But they found a way with that 41-yard touchdown pass with Jalen Hurts, to, or excuse me, to, uh, pass that set up the touchdown and the touch push to Devontae Smith. They put that ball right in the bread basket of Devontae Smith. This team has done this all season long. And we've always said, you can't get away with that against mistakes. Well, those kind of mistakes against teams like the Chiefs. They got away with those types of mistakes uh, against Kansas City Chiefs right. tonight. Well, here was the awakening for the Philadelphia Eagles. After they started the third quarter, we're going, this is not, it's not in the cars tonight. All of a sudden, they get a punt return from Britton Covey, My God. Which, which, which energizes the drive. And they get DeAndre Swift. They start running the football. They get DeAndre Swift for a 35-yard carry that gets to the Kansas City 15. And all of a sudden, you go, well, okay, well, they score here. It's a field goal game. And two plays later, Hurts with a beautifully designed keeper and gets into the end zone, seven plays, 61 yards, and it's 17 to 14 all of a sudden. Now, we're thinking at this point, oh, it's 17 to 14. The Chiefs only give up 15 points a game, and Mahomes has got to have some kind of magic up his sleeve. And so what happens is they drive, and Travis Kelsey fumbles the ball. Roby punches it out, and the Eagles get it at the 10. 
And that turned out, even though the Chiefs did knock on the door from that point on, that turned about to be a huge momentum killer for Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's really what we were talking about going into this game, is whether or not you could win the turnover battle against Kansas City Chiefs. They get those two turnovers. I know the Eagles didn't do much with those turnovers in terms of what they did with the offense, nothing. got the ball in their hands. How they about did. nothing? Well, the <laughs> only thing it did was negate seven points possibly by the Kansas City Chiefs. That's the only thing it did. It took points off the board for the Chiefs, but you did, did nothing negate? with it offensively. Did they did it they, did they negate it or did they do nothing with it? Well, they did nothing okay. other I, I than want... other than prevent the seven points <laughs> and help flip the field, at least in some cases, even though Tony all of a sudden out of nowhere started having himself another Wait great game in the return game against the Eagles. They never flipped the field. They went to no, two they, bubble they, they, they went to two they, bubble screens. Two terrible and then, calls. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, terrible and, and calls. They, and they gave it right back to him. And the Chiefs drove again, Seth, on that. And and, and this is where uh, uh, the great third down that throw to Watson, where he beat Sidney Brown, Blankenship was coming on the blitz. But again, it fizzled because Watson, alligator arm to pass <laughs> over the middle. And then let's not get to the, to the play of the game, really. It looked like a touchdown to the Chiefs, a beautifully thrown bomb uh, by Patrick Mahomes to uh, Valdez Scantling, who, al who, who stone hands it in the end. It's right in his hands, and he doesn't come up with the play. So Kansas City did as much to give this game to the Eagles. But you, listen, when you shut out Can you a say team that again? in the second hit, well, they did. Let's face it. The receivers really were, did not catch well, football but that's, that. that's the point. And everybody's going to be like, oh, the Eagles won. There goes Seth Joyner again. <laughs> you know, so the question that I have to ask you, when you look at the win-loss column, it will say that the Eagles are 9-1, and one, okay? But you have to ask yourself tonight, did the Eagles win this game or did Kansas City in a way give it to them? In a lot of ways, Kansas City gave them the game. I'm just, I'm but just now there's nine. Advocate. But I understand that. But now there's nine wins I, I for the Eagles this, this season. Because we're looking at how good Kansas City is. Mm -hmm. Their receivers aren't very good, and, and Kelsey they they kept Kelsey in check at least for big plays tonight, and then he gave one back. Uh, that bomb should have been a touchdown. A good receiver catches that ball. But but the winning drive turns out to be one of these deals. Screen pass to Swift, which was a good call. They finally got the running back in a screen pass. Third down conversion pass to Smith, which was another one. And the bomb to Smith, where he made a nice you know, gathering of the ball, slowed his route down to confuse the, the, the trailing defender. And that gets to the one. And when they get to the one, what's going to happen? It's, it's the touch push for the touchdown. And a 21 to 17 set with 620 left. Did you think they were going to be able to hold on? No, I thought Mahomes was going to do what he normally does. I really did. I really did. But you know what? This wide receiver core, you know, we talked about it in the pre in the in the po in the pregame. We talked about Mark asked the question, what's the difference between Andy Reid as the head coach in Kansas City and Andy Reid as a head coach in Philadelphia? And I said absolutely nothing. Nothing. He went and got his franchise quarterback, five. He went and got his franchise quarterback, 15. He built the offensive line. He finally got a defensive coordinator, you know, that could do what Jim Johnson did. But the biggest hindrance to Andy Reid's career is the fact that they had a great wide receiver in Tyreek Hill. They let him get away. And look at this wide receiver core that they have now. They look like the wide receiver core that Donovan McNabb had before we got T.O. And they played like that tonight. They played that way. I mean, this, this, this wide receiver core and the drops by Travis Kelsey, the fumble by Travis Kelsey, I call it the swift effect. But you know <laughs> what? I, when you think about all of those things, their shortcoming as a, as a wide receiver core is just as much at the core of what's ailing the Kansas City Chiefs as anything else, you know. Now, I, we, you brought it up. I'm talking about it, but I'm still not going to take things away from the Eagles because, you know, there were plays in this game that they made when they had to make it. The buy it interception was huge. I mean, absolutely huge. The punch out by Roby was huge. You know, those weren't plays where – you know, the Chiefs said, here, have this gift. Those were plays that they made. They made stuff happen. And I give Sean Desai a lot of credit. At halftime, the Chiefs had 17 points. What was the final score? 
21-17. He blanked them in the it, second it, half. Shut out in the second half. I'll give you another big play that's, uh, that we have to focus on. Kansas City did get the ball back uh, at, at, at the 14. You thought the Eagles could bury them there. They did get it to midfield. And they, after they missed the bomb, a tremendous defensive play put heat on Mahomes and forced an intentional grounding, mm-hmm. which really kind of took them out. That was a, a monster play. It was huge. It was, ab- it was absolutely huge for Sweat to get the pressure and force the, the grounding, which took away third down, you know, and the yardage. And now all of a sudden you got fourth and 20-something. And, and I'll be darned if Mahomes almost didn't complete that pass. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you could have, when you, when you really looked at it in slow motion, the referee could have threw a flag for P.I. because Slay was early on, on Watson. But Watson's been just been dropping balls all night, all night long. The ball was right in his hands. Right in his hands. Right, right through. Right through his hands. Second one, I, th- I think it was on the same possession as well. That went right through the hands of Watson on that possession. Yeah, he did not have a sterling night. No, not after the touchdown. Not after yeah. he was well, wide he open been, in the end zone yeah. for the first touchdown of the game. It's funny because Valdez Scantling, the knock on him is bad hands. You know, he, he's, he leads the league most, most years in drops. And, and that was the play. Mahomes just couldn't have thrown a more perfect pass. No, it, it was right and, there. And we're sitting here talking, celebrating Eagles victory here. <laughs> well, they're looking at that play. We go, oh, no, he's open there. That's a touchdown. <laughs> Plank. <laughs> well, like, I'll, I'll say this. A lot of times we have walked away after Eagles games and said, you can't make these mistakes against better teams. The Kansas City Chiefs now have to say that about the Philadelphia Eagles. They can't make the mistakes that they made in tonight's game against teams like the Eagles because the Eagles aren't going to let them get away with it. Listen, now, it, was, it was just it was the Eagles' night because if they, played, if they replayed this game five times in a row, the Eagles would lose that game four out of five times. All right, so what because they're not they're not making those those types of mistakes on an ongoing basis. I mean, Travis Kelsey's not dropping balls. Mm-hmm. He's not fumbling the ball. Those guys aren't dropping perfectly placed passes that that Mahomes put in place. They're just not doing that. They're not doing that for you know the other four out of five times. They're just not. So you're saying the Eagles really didn't prove that they were the better team in this game. This hey, their, record, their, game. Record, their record proves that they are the best team in the National Football League, period. Period. I hope that they cut that clip up. Yeah, but, on social but, nope, that will not oh, get the clip. Oh, why not? On, <laughs> hold it. But you said four out of five times. I wanted to open pro game. that one. <laughs> Wait, did he just say four out of five times? They four out of five. Th- yes, he just said so that. That's what I'm asking you. But, are, I'm not, are the but Mike, the- I'm not arguing with you about that, okay? <laughs> they are the best team in the National Football League because their record says so. Their record says so. They, listen, this team could be – they could be five and five, six and four, real easy, but they know how to win football games. And you can call it luck. You can call it whatever you want. They are nine and one, and there's yep. not another team that's close to being able to do they, they to win games the game way that tonight, they won games. Guys, with AJ Brown having one catch for eight yards in this game, and another temper tantrum on the sideline. What does that, does that tell you? And also, no tight end, and they still won the game. They didn't get any kind of meaningful contribution from their tight ends and they're really thin there because Calcaterra got hurt again and they still win the game. I, I just how did they how did they do it? All right so I'll ask you this question then Mike because this is a number we haven't even mentioned yet. What if I would have told you all those numbers before the game were going to take place in this matchup and Jalen Hurts was sacked five times in the first half? I, I'm, there's no way you're telling me that the Eagles are winning that football game. No and, and so the only thing I, I can do and we, we're going to have to give credit to the defense when you pitch a shutout you give credit to the defense. There is no way that I thought that they would be able to hold Patrick Mahomes to zero points, despite his inadequacies, his inadequacies at wide receiver. And I, you know, the tight end's head did not seem to be in his game. And I, I love to make these little connections here, right? Because Taylor Swift was supposed to be at this game. This was supposed to be a love fest. Taylor Swift, her parents from Why a Missing PA, meeting the Kelseys for the first time. She had to cancel a concert on Sunday, which was postponed to today, or she would have flown in. And he lost his mind. The swift letdown. He lost his security blanket. <laughs> Seriously. It was a letdown game. When's the last time you saw Travis Kelsey play timidly like he played tonight? I don't think I've ever seen him play that timidly. Uh, and not sure-handed, in over his head, 
I'm sticking, head not in the game. I'm yes, sticking absolutely. with the Tay Tay story. <laughs> Gotta be. See, this is what love can do to you, Seth. Da, da. Listen, it's the it's the star effect. You know, I said it way, way, way back. I said I like our Kelsey Swift combination <laughs> a hell of a lot better than I like that Kelsey Swift combination. You know, out there in Kansas City. And I said I was would be more productive, and it has been. <laughs> Certainly wow. tonight, especially. But, Mike, to your point earlier, just about this team not looking the same at all in the first half versus the second half, I had never, even in the Jets game that the Eagles lost, I've never seen the Eagles look as terrified as they did in this game, especially leading up to that fourth quarter. A- absolutely. I mean, no, we talked saying- about the mesh point. I'm talking about the, that mesh point between DeAndre Swift and Jalen Hurts at least two different occasions in the game, they looked like they had never played together yeah, they before. Scored a, they scored a touchdown on the first uh, one. Well, on the first one, they did. They were able to recover from it. But at that particular moment, it didn't look great. And then later in the game, they have that same type of miscommunication and ends up leading to a three-yard loss, I believe, on a third and one. They ended up having to go on a fourth and four. So that was a scary moment right there, and it did not look like the Eagles were going to establish any fluidity to their offense. They had continuously gone three and out, three and out, three and out. And then out of nowhere, on the back-to-back screen plays near their own goal line, which we were all screaming about in the green room, saying, how do you run that play twice? And then they run it twice. They suck in the defense. And I hate to say this, Seth, but it's the only time I've ever agreed with the idea of a screen game being an extension of the run because it did a lot of what we see the run do. It brought the linebackers in. It brought everyone closer to the middle of the field. And then they were able to try to get it to the outside, spread the field a little bit. That's where they got the big play there by uh, Devontae Smith down the field. Farzee. People, when they hear me talk about football, they think I'm a dinosaur in my thinking, okay? (laughs) But I always say it, the more the game changes, the more the game stays the same. The way that you slow down a fast, aggressive, attacking defense, you run delayed draws, and you saw Kansas City try to do some of that to kind of slow down the pass rush early in the game. You also run running back screens. Because if the linemen, if your defensive ends and your tackles are screaming up the field, now when the offensive linemen release, they're on the linebackers. Now you got to play. And you saw that one play where Swift got tackled on the third and long. Like, if Dickerson makes that block, Swift may still be running. You know? So the game really doesn't change that much. It just takes you having the fortitude and the in-game adjustability and the creativity to say, okay, how are we going to slow down this pass rush? How are we going to slow down Steve Spagnuolo's aggressiveness? He's bringing 22 off the edge all the time. He's bringing guys up the middle every single play because he knows that he really doesn't have a great front. He's got an an emerging defensive end in Karlapiskas. He's got a, a, a game changer, you know, in, at 95 in the middle. I mean, that guy is the straight-up truth, and that's all he has. So he's got to figure out a way to generate pressure. So he's coming with the blitz, and the blitz is taking care of the run on the way to the quarterback. So the way that you slow that down and the way that you take care of that is you run delayed plays. You run delayed draws. You run s- screens to the running back. You run screens to the side that they're bringing the blitz. When you're going to bring 22 off the edge, run the screen his way. And they did it. But the guy knocked it down. The one time they had it, they they would have still been running. They had three on two out there. So both blockers had the two DBs out there. If he completes that ball to Alameda Zacchaeus, he's probably still running. You know, so there's ways. There's ways. And, you know, I, I give the Eagles credit because in the second half they figured out you know, how to get it right. I think they were trying to figure it out after the, the, the Kelsey turnover. They tried to go wide receiver screen. But when they got to the running back screens with Swift, it was a game changer. It was a major game changer. Yeah, it really was. They, now, th- th- this is how bad it was in the first half, folks. Hurts uh, had three completions in the whole first half. The, the, the blitz and, and the rush when he didn't blitz was just killing him. He had no tight end threat as a security blanket. He looked kind of slow in trying to escape the pocket. He, he looked very sluggish. He got sacked five times. A.J. Brown had one catch and two targets 
Uh, they only ran 18 plays in the first half, and then they went three and out on their first drive with only 79 yards gained so far, and 70 came on their first drive when they scored a touchdown. They did not convert, and to that point of the third quarter, a third down. And all of a sudden, bang, here comes that drive with Covey's punt return, and the offense cooked a little bit with DeAndre Stewart with the big carry. And it was almost like, it was almost like the Eagles were asking the Chiefs to beat them at that point. And the Chiefs just could not follow up and score in the third quarter. Had they scored in that third quarter with the Eagles still in sluggish mode, we may have been talking about a different story in this game. But they did not threaten to score. And when they did, the tight end turned it over. I was looking at the game against the Rams earlier in the season where you saw Cooper Cup go up there with 96 yards in the first half and then 27 the rest of the way. The thing that has been so impressive about Sean Desai and his defense is their ability to make adjustments in the second half. Now, we can talk about the offense finally clicking in the high gear in that fourth quarter, but throughout that entire second half, the, the Kansas City Chiefs were the team that was out coached. Sure, there were big plays left out there on the field, but overall, seeing your defensive coordinator and Sean Desai make adjustments where you didn't see guys like Josh Sweat being suckered in, like you were pointing out during the game, Seth, as many times as he did in the first half. I don't know if that was something that they brought to his attention, because it's not like during halftime there's big rah-rah speeches like you see in the movies. They're little things that are made for adjustments, and that seemed to happen with Josh Sweat. When you go into that type of second half, though, and you have the outcome that you did, especially with the way you were finally able to stop the run, Eagles giving up more about uh, double the amount of uh, yards on the ground that they had on average throughout every in game the first this season. Half. In the first half alone. Then they make that adjustment in the second half to only allow, I think it was 46 yards allowed in that second half. That is a miraculous change of events there by the Philadelphia Eagles and the run defense. Listen, Matt, <laughs> I'm looking at the numbers here, and I'm going, okay, this is a team that won. Jalen Hurts completed 14 passes at 22 attempts for 150 yards tonight. and got intercepted once, and he got sacked five times in the first half. DeAndre Swift, all right, he had a nice night. The 35-yard scamper was a big play, 12 carries for 76 yards. Jalen didn't run the ball for a touchdown. He had 12 carries in this game for 29, and you know they weren't really – three of them were maybe designed runs on that. Uh, they got nothing from Boston Scott or Kenneth Gainwell uh, and nothing from A.J. Brown, but Devontae Smith comes up big tonight. Usually it's A.J. Brown or Devontae Smith tonight. Devontae Smith, six catches for 99 yards, and, of course, the big one being the 41-yard uh, gain, and he had eight targets. And A.J., four, four targets today. It looked like he was into the flow at all in this game. I, the interception... I don't know if it was a change of route at the last minute. I don't know if he just decided that he had a touchdown waiting for him. But, of course, you have a guy like Jalen Hurts. He's got the pressure in his face. He's not going to be able to make that read right out of the gate. And I guess A.J. Brown thought that their chemistry over the years was going to carry it into the end zone. Ended up being the interception there, unfortunately, by Jalen Hurts. But to see Devontae Smith just be that ready when you haven't seen him utilized as much in recent weeks, especially coming out of the bye, that was fantastic. And seeing the late hand situation, Seth, you were talking about this as well, Seeing the late hand situation with that 41 yard reception was great. That set up the tush push touchdown. Because if he shows those hands early with that ball being a little underthrown, that pass maybe gets broken up. So that's a young guy right there making a great veteran play on that football. And that's something that, of course, the Eagles have missed over the years at the wide receiver position. Devontae Smith brings that every night. Oh, he is, he is wise beyond his years because you, you just don't understand how massive a play that was. Because the average player, when they're running down the field and that ball's in the air, they're going to put their hands up to catch that ball because that's the natural reaction. But if he puts his hand up, now the defender can put his hand up and potentially knock it away. So he just kind of dead hands it and was just running and went into a slide and just let the ball fall in the basket. And by the time the defender knew where the ball was, it was already in his hands. It was, it was a huge play. Um, let me say this. Every player has an opposite somewhere that has their number, okay? I don't think A.J. Brown had that great of a night tonight because LeJarrius Sneed was on him all night tonight. I mean, he was physical with him at the line of scrimmage. He was, he was on him everywhere. He took the challenge of stopping one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League tonight. And LeJarrius Sneed might be 
A.J. Brown's only kryptonite. I mean, I've seen no one. I mean, I, I, I got to go back. I just want to go back for a second and look at his numbers, okay? One catch for eight yards? Yeah, one catch for eight yards. Come on. I mean, even when he was upset at the beginning of the season, it was better than that. <laughs> Four targets. Come on. I mean, sometimes, you know, you face a guy that just has your number. You know, as a pro ball player at playing 13 years, yeah, there was a guy who had my number. He could block me. And then there was another guy, you know, who, who was – he was held to cover. You know, there was a guy coming out of the backfield that was held to cover. We all got that one adversary, you know, and I think the luxurious need is that guy for A.J. Brown. I don't think A.J. Brown wants to see him anytime soon. Right. And that's not saying anything negative about A.J. Brown. I'm just saying that there are, there are great players in the National Football League. So there's always somebody that has your number. And tonight, LeJarrius Sneed had A.J. Brown's number. So let's look at what Kansas City did. They get intercepted in the end zone. Kelsey fumbled at the 10. And then Valdez Scantling clanked one off his hands. <laughs> three, three situations where they should have had seven. And they didn't get seven. So let's, let's look back at this game and how it started because the, uh, the Eagles were down 7 nothing in this game, uh, and the Chiefs, um, it, Mahomes made a nice imp- improvisational play where he flipped to Justin Watson, was wide open in the end zone. Looks like Bayard got lost on that play on the other side. The, the Eagles answer with a nine-play, 75-yard drive, and you're thinking this game's going to be rock'em, sock'em. We're going to go up and down. Uh, they had seven runs on that drive, and Swift with a, with a great 18-yard run to set up a uh, four-yard t- uh, touchdown to tie the game at 7-7. Now, on that play that he scored, <coughs> I think the Eagles got the benefit of the doubt. It looked like Zacchaeus was holding it on that play. Somebody's holding on every play. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they catch you, sometimes they don't, man. Okay. They missed the one on the collar there, but you're right, yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, and, and then, uh, of course, we get to the second quarter. Tony had a – well, Kadarius Tony plays well against the Philadelphia Eagles. He stinks against everybody else. He has a great uh, punt return that gives the, the Chiefs the ball at, at midfield. Uh, Sweat, who, who really killed him in the first half, very undisciplined play, containing and also jumping off sides. He jumped offside on a third and seven, which gave them a, a smaller uh, third and two to convert, and Pacheco, Pacheco converts it, and then Mahomes scrambles, and he gets to the 11, and then there's a three-yard touchdown pass on third down to make it 14-7. to seven. Isaiah Pacheco with a big night, by the way, had 19 carries for 89 yards. I like him. He's a tough runner. Um, and, and the Eagles suddenly were getting dominated on offense, three and out punt. Chiefs got it at the Eagles' 46. They got it to the 25, and they make a 43-yard field goal to go into halftime at 17-7. to and, and we're taking inventory of this game and going, hey, you know what, it's probably not their night. It didn't feel like it. No, it just didn't feel like their night. The, the thing that really bothered me was that during the week there was a lot of conversation about Jalen Hurts not having that brace on his knee anymore. And you're talking about how the bye week hit at the right time for him and for some other teammates to get healthy at that time. It looked like the brace was still on the knee tonight. And then he looked like he had zero escapability. There were certain plays throughout the five sacks in particular that he didn't have time to escape in the pocket, and that's legit. There were maybe two or three other plays where maybe Jalen Hurts from a year ago or at different points in this season even is able to escape that pocket and be able to carry that football at least out of harm's way and gain a couple of yards. The only time you really saw that kind of explosiveness tonight from Jalen Hurts was on the touchdown run. Listen, I will tell you this. One of the hardest things in the world is when you get a lower body injury during the season is to recover 100%. Especially, you know, when you're being sacked, when you're being asked to do all the things that Jalen Hurts is being asked to do, and defenders are trying to take you out every single time that you run the ball, okay? The two weeks rest was probably great, but this is something that's going to bother him for the rest of the season. There's just no getting around that. You know, I think he knows that. I think that's why he doesn't address it. I think Nick Sirianni understands and knows that. I think that's why they kind of limit how much they actually try to run him. A lot of the running that you see him do now, to me, is just posturing to make sure that the defense is prepared for the fact that he still may run the ball. I don't think they're running him as a weapon as much as, you know, they really would like to, other than, you know, they had the numbers. They really had the numbers on the touchdown run, the 10-yard down, the ten yard run, and it was a straight-ahead run. He didn't have to cut or change directions or anything. 
So I think when he's running in a, in a linear straight line that he's fine. I think it's the start and stop and the change of direction that really bothers his knee. Well, let me ask you this real quick just because you're the former athlete. At what stage do you think Jalen Hurts is at? Do you think he's at the, the stage where he is healthy enough to do it, but mentally he's not trusting the injury? Where do you think he's at? Is it more of a mental thing right now, or is it still physical? No, I think he's. I think it's physical. Okay. He's, he's hurting, okay, and he's doing everything he can to carry this football team where they believe that they can go. So he's a warrior. He's going. He's going to get out there and fight, but physically, he's not able to do the yeah. things that they would like for him to do in this offense and what he would like to do in this offense, because he's he's hurt. Now, there's a big difference between being hurt and injured. If you're injured, that means you can't play. That means you can't operate at the level that you need to operate to be successful for the team. He's hurting, and he's a warrior. So as a warrior, when you're hurting, you keep fighting. You don't fight until you're injured, until you're mortally wounded. You keep going. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's totally obvious that, uh, that he's, he's hurting. And I think that was one of the reasons why they, they came with fire early on. And in the second half, I think they bailed out of that a little bit. So we'll have to uh, – Steve Spagnola will get uh, asked about that. But let's take a, take a breath right now. Uh, a little message for the people out there. If you're looking to hire right now in the IT and engineering, manufacturing, or technology fields, all you got to do is contact our buddy Gary Kane and his team at Kane Partners Staffing Solutions. And here's how you can connect. Staffing is not easy, but that's what we do every day, all day. The key to our success is storytelling, asking the right questions to find the right people. I'm Gary Kane, president of Kane Partners. We want to be your staffing partner. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Kane and uh, Kane uh, Staffing Solutions. Uh, Derek Gunn, the great D Gunn, will join us uh, in a little bit. Uh, and we'll also uh, hear from Kayla Santiago in the Diamond Debate. And uh, everybody else involved with this show today is the Eagles. I'm, I'm just stunned, man. 21 to 17 was your final. It is the Pond La Hockey postgame show. We are live at Ocean Casino. And we're coming back right 